Are you super new to the sport and don't have any gear and have no idea what to buy? Check it out on this episode of How Not to Highline. Hi, I'm Ryan Jinks and welcome to my gear room. So let's talk about gear. I have been asked by many people and have seen new Highliners buy things that aren't that efficient over the long term of their slackline hobby. And I really want to help guide you on what to buy if you don't have anything and are broke as shit. Because if you have all the money in the world, then you can make mistakes in buying and it doesn't matter to you. So let's get started. First of all, I know how you can get any size rig for only $50. Um, all you have to do is buy Kim and me some burgers and pay for the gas to go on a trip and be willing to carry all my shit. And you can go on just about any one of our trips. So I'm not entirely joking when I say that, but the point is you can find other Highliners and go to Highline festivals if you have no money. Uh, don't necessarily buy things right out the gate if, um, if you really don't know what to buy. Now I'm going to guide you through how to buy stuff. I'm not going to tell you exactly what to buy because then the video becomes obsolete after um, just a few months as new year comes on the market. But I'm going to show you what to buy so you don't have to rebuy things because that's the most expensive thing. This wall is not my success. This wall is my failure um, because no one needs this much shit. So. Um, I want to make sure that you can buy uh, one rig, never have to buy anything again, and show you how to combine your friend's gear for bigger pieces. And the only time you would ever have to buy new gear is when you wear out what I'm going to tell you to buy. Now let me emphasize the find friends in high places uh, concept. You're more likely, you need to be able to find friends, and you can do that on the Slackademics Slackline group page. Uh, Kim put together every Facebook Slackline group in the world. There's over 1,300 of them in just about every country. Um, unless you live in a country that's really flat and has no Slackline groups, um, well, then you're out of luck. But if you, if you live anywhere else, uh, there's very likely to be people around you. Now, the question is, um, once you find people, and be bold, reach out. Um, humanomics, just how to make friends. I kind of wanted this to be its own video because it's so important. Um, do homework. Watch my videos, watch other people's videos, talk the lingo. If you talk the talk and you sound like a slackliner, people are a lot more likely to invite you. But if you act like a consumer, like it's some carnival ride, yeah, we, we don't like that. Once you sound like a slackliner, make sure you bring something to the table. I believe in the gas, grass, or ass, nobody rides for free concept. Nobody gets to just come and walk on our lines, enjoy everything we've done without contributing something. Now, if you don't have any gear, uh, because you're either new or broke, you don't have to bring money to the table. Um, I would be more than happy to bring somebody who didn't have any money and was completely new and needed me to hold their hand along the way if they carried my backpack. Um, some people give back massages. Some people have a different sport that they bring into the, uh, the group. That's really cool. Some people have connections. Bring something to the table and people will want to call you back. So basically, be a good friend and you'll find highlining friends. Now let's go back to the Highline Festival idea. There are enough festivals today during Highline season that you pretty much never have to have gear. I know people that don't own any gear that are like legit Highliners. So um, that is an option. It depends if you have a job and you can't you know, go to festivals all the time. But uh, if you live in Europe or the west coast of North America or Brazil, there's festivals all the time. And so uh, if you live in a place that's not near those, you might have a harder time. Um, but when there are festivals, they're always staggered. Uh, I don't 
know of any festivals that are on top of a, of another festival. So you can literally, people live out of their van and go festival hopping for months out of the year. You can type in Slackline Festivals into Google. Um, there's several different uh, places that try to make lists for it, but it's really hard to update. Um, and a lot of the lists are only like European specific or North American specific. Facebook has lists and groups. Um, every festival, it seems, has a Facebook group. So that is how you find out the information for each one. Once you find one, you can kind of snake your way through and find them all. Um, but that is definitely worth your time and worth the effort to find Slackline festivals and go to them before spending hundreds of dollars on a Slackline rig. Okay, so you're probably thinking you're five minutes into a video and all you've learned was how not to buy gear. Um, but if you really like slacklining and you really want to pursue this, let me share with you what I think you should buy as the bare minimum for a rig that would be slackline friendly and highline friendly. Now keep in mind, I am not sponsored by anyone. Kim is on the Slack Life BC team and they have generously given us some webbing. Um, but I really don't get free gear. No one owns me. It's kind of nice to be... I can't say unbiased because I do have my favorite companies or my favorite piece of gear, but um, it's not because someone paid me to say it. So I'm going to give you the raw, honest truth. I think I'm the only uh, channel that regularly makes videos that isn't owned by a Slackline company. So here is the raw, honest, how to buy your Highline rig guide. So let's start with the one piece of gear no one can debate whether or not you need. Webbing. Now, Jeremy Beard made a really cool chart that we put on Slackademics, and it compares pretty much all the webbings that, that I'm, I believe it's all the webbings, um, of the, the cost, the strength, the elongation, the weight, and he compares all of them. And it's really helpful if you're looking for um, your specific needs. Now, how much webbing do you need to buy? I really, really recommend 100 meters. Uh, I really recommend that because if you get anything shorter, you're going to outgrow it quickly. And then you're buying gear twice. You don't really need something longer than 100 meters because as soon as you start rigging high lines longer than that, you're generally going to go with people who hopefully also have 100 meters. And you can either use it as main and backup, or you can use main and main. If they have sewn loops, you can connect those videos like that are going to come out very soon and ideally you only ever have one 100 meter rig now for slacklining in the park i believe once you get beyond 100 meters um, it gets kind of sketchy because you have to start putting the slack line higher and higher in the trees so it doesn't touch the ground in the middle so 100 meters is a great place to start now, if you're an American, learn to love meters because the world will force you to. Um, one meter is 3.2 feet. So if you have uh, 100 meters, just multiply by three-ish and it should be correct. 100 meters is 328 feet. Now you have to know these things because you might prefer some European webbings if you live over here in America and vice versa. You have to look at the price per unit. Just remember basic math, 1.5 euro per meter is cheaper than a dollar per foot in America. Think about it. Now the type of webbing is important because if you get something super, super low stretch, it doesn't like knots. And I'm going to talk about tying knots to save money. Um, and whipping on a super low stretch high line isn't going to be fun. So you want something that's high enough stretch that it can take knots and that you can whip comfortably on something. So ideally something very stretchy. However, if you're going to use this as a slack line, very stretchy sucks because you have to tension a lot before uh, it's tight enough to not touch in the middle. Uh, if you ever take nylon webbing. There's nylon, polyester, and high-tech fibers like Vectrin and Dyneema. Um, and Vectrin is not even really uh, being made anymore. It's pretty expensive. So nylon webbing is very stretchy. And then there's like combinations of all three, right? 
man, you just, you're pulling for days, it's super tight in the park, and it still touches in the middle. So you don't want something that's super high stretch if you're aiming for a one webbing wonder. Now I'm gonna walk you through the chart on Slackademics and think out loud uh, so you kind of understand what you're looking at. Otherwise it could be confusing. But something to keep in mind is location. If you don't live in Europe, it could actually cost you more to buy some of the European webbings and have them shipped here, and vice versa. It could cost you quite a bit to have something shipped from uh, US or Canada if you live in a different part of the world than where their free shipping is included. So keep in mind, um, buying locally might be your best bet. Webbing is a non-negotiable, you need that. Everything else is up for debate on what you need. What I'm gonna tell you is the bare bones. So uh, let's talk about anchors. Uh, for slack lining in a park, you're gonna go generally around trees and you, in a typical situation, would use a span set. Um, they're super strong and commonly used. However, if you're trying to go with just the bare bones, uh, span sets are common for highline anchors in Europe, but um, they're not really adjustable. They're a little bulky. Um, you can't uh, keep them from extending if one bolt breaks. I like static ropes. I use these for my highline anchors. This is more of a thing in America, um, is to use rope. This is an eight millimeter by 10 meters or 30-ish feet long rope. So this, I can tie around a tree, wrap it around as many times as makes sense, and then tie two figure eights on the end and clip your shackle or whatever you're gonna use on the end of that. Um, you need to pad trees, but you don't need to buy Tree Pro. You can use a towel or you can use almost anything. Two pad, uh, old carpet's a great one. Uh, put the carpet on the tree and then put um, the back of the carpet is what this would be around. Um, lots of cheap options there. But if you have two of these, you can rig, technically you can rig all natural anchors, you can rig bolted anchors, uh, you can do uh, projects in the park. So this is all you need for your anchors. Now I used to use, kind of still I'm transitioning, um, a sliding X with these on bolts and then I would use these whoopee slings to prevent the line from extending if one bolt were to blow, which almost never happens. So now I'm transitioning into a BFK. A BFK is a big effing knot. And so um, it pulls on everything evenly, it doesn't extend, it's more efficient um, if you're trying to go with bare bones. Now where do you buy this stuff? This is Canyonarian rope. It has Dyneema core, um, which is what this blue stuff is. Um, it's not blue inside, but it is uh, like 5,000 pounds strong. Whereas like a normal eight millimeter rope, like uh, the red climbing rope here, that's around 3,000 pounds strong. Um, but anyways, you don't have to buy something that strong. You can buy a normal uh, eight millimeter static rope um, from any reputable company and it will be a good enough anchor for slack lining and high lining. Okay, the next thing you're gonna need is a high line leash. Um, because learning how to high line while free soloing is not smart. So, got a few leashes here. Let's start with the leash itself. Um, this is, uh, these leashes I get are from Balance Community. They're 9.9 .9 millimeter dynamic ropes inside of an 11 16 tubular webbing. So it feels like it's all part of the same um, when it's a rope inside of tubular webbing. It's thicker, it makes it easier to climb, it feels good, it's really, really common to have these things. Um, I was just in Europe and I had, uh, I don't know how thick the rope was inside, but it was one inch tubular webbing, which I imagine would be a lot more easier to stuff inside. But it felt like a loose diaper, you know, it just kind of slid up and down. I wasn't that fond of it. So um, I like the ones from Balance Community. They are $40 though. Um, this leash is just an 11 mil or 10 and a half mil dynamic rope. Um, technically, you could use a static rope because it's the absorption of the slack line that does all the absorbing. 
but um, you definitely don't want to use the 8 millimeter static rope. You know, if you were to buy 100 feet of it, don't try to use part of that for um, a leash. It's, it's too thin. Unless you tape two of them together, which I'm all for tying in twice and redundancy. Um, but it's too hard to climb something smaller than this. So 10 or 11 mil diameter, you can see the diameters here, um, are nice. This wouldn't cost you this much. This is only 12 feet, 4-ish meters. So, um, you know, at a buck a foot, how much is that, right? Whereas this is almost $40. But these are very labor intensive to make, so that's why they cost so much. As far as the rings go, you can get fancy stuff like the Zurge ring. There's uh, rings that are coming out soon. And then you got uh, the Vortex, which I paid more in shipping than, than the plastic practically costs. But this is really cool, it's removable. And titanium, which is not practical whether or not you have the money. Uh, it is lighter, but so is the Vortex. Mm -hmm. Here you have the bomber ring, and then you have what has been used for years, two medium steel rings. These are from Balance Community. They're $8 each. Um, this is Slacktivity's aluminum ring. Uh, the one they have now is bigger. But this is like 10, 10 euro each if you buy two of them. Um, should you use two? Technically. I know people use this big bomber ring um, in just one of them. But it's much, much better to have two rings or a leash design where the rope goes around. Um, but it, it's really hard to beat two medium steel rings at eight dollars a piece. Um, and what you do is you just tape them together. So at the end of the day, it should look something like this. And if you spent, let's say, fifteen dollars on the leash and eight dollars each on the rings, you're looking at about thirty bucks um, for this setup. Okay, how do you connect that webbing to your anchor? Um, this is up for debate. Let's go over sewing loops real quick. I know Slack Life BC offers them now. I don't know if they charge. Uh, Balance Community offers them. They do charge. Uh, Slacktivity, I don't think, offers them. Um, it's really hard to find a local source to have your webbing sewn. But if you can get a sewing loop, uh, here I have 10 bar tacks. Um, and this is just incredible. You can just basically clip it to your master point. Um, and that takes care of at least one side of your main, or if you fold it in half and they're both sewing loops, your main and your backup. Um, if, you, if you can't get the sewing loops, it's not the end of the world. You can use frost knots. Now, tying knots in your webbing significantly reduces the strength of your webbing. And if it's super low stretch webbing, it doesn't take uh, the bends very well because then it's putting all the force on the outside fibers and not the inside fibers, yada yada. But if you do a frost knot, especially with nylon, like Sky Pilot that I have over here, you, you maintain 70-ish uh, percent of the strength of your webbing, which technically is the same as some weblocks. So instead of, just don't buy four weblocks. It's, it's freaking ridiculous. Um, as you can see, I know that from experience. So let me show you how to do the frost knot. Now, I'm trying not to make this video about how-tos, but uh, this is very, very critical to know how to do this. You can uh, just Google it, but here you go. Um, if you just take a bite of your webbing, I have a, a sewing loop on the end, but pretend that is just a normal end. Uh, you fold it in half. If you were to tie a knot like this, it's just a simple knot, a water knot, whatever you want to call it, this bend radius is too small. It reduces the strength quite a bit. Now this is nylon, it takes it like a champ, but you do not want to do this. Not want to do this, get it? Um, so what you do is you fold it over again. And that's the magic to make the knot fatter. Um, it takes, you can see here, quite a bit of webbing to do this. So um, you fold it over again. Now you can see this strand that we're gonna be walking on um, is on the outside. Fold it this way. And now that strand is sandwiched in between the uh, in between the four. So you can see here our main line is coming out in between. That's what gives it the strength. Once you have that, you can tie basically that simple knot again. Just go around and 
voila. That is a frost knot. Main line is coming out right there, and that's what you can clip. This is going to hold enough strength for you to high line on if you don't want to spend the money on uh, two web locks for the main line or four web locks for everything. Okay, so you do need at least one web lock because we're not going to have a tension system. And so you need to be able to pre-tension, whatever. So um, because you're not going to have a tension system, it becomes really difficult to undo your slack line. Uh, so you need a soft release built in to what I'm showing you with what I'm imagining as a minimal slack line kit or slack line high line kit. Um, this is the Weblock 4.0 from Balance Community. I made this into a soft release. I also have the links from Land Cruising uh, with their Airbow, which I don't think they uh, have out anymore. Um, this is great because you're basically the webbing can be put into the Weblock. Now this is the Weblock I'd recommend if you're willing to spend more than $100 on a Weblock. This is the Pure Lock from uh, Pure Slacklines. Um, it has the pin pops out, um, the diverter, you pinch that pin there, it comes out. Uh, what I like about this is it comes with this shackle. You can do things with this shackle. Um, whereas the cheaper web lock, if you're looking for something in the $40 range, is a uh, cat lock SR. Um, it, it's known to have some sharp edges. You can always file those down. The diverter is not very big. But if you're going for cheap, you can do that one because the back of it has a pin that you can attach a soft release. So uh, there are several slack line web locks that are in the $60 range. Um, you just want to make sure that you can add the soft release. And Slack FR has the slab power for 45 euro and um, it, it has a small eye in the back. So it's great if you're just using a shackle, but uh, you can't use the soft release system with it. EQB has a web lock like this design called the Sheriff FX. It is only $63, um, but they say you're not supposed to use it uh, above one meter above the ground, which means don't use it on a high line. Not sure why. Uh, web lock's a web lock, but since they say you don't do that, maybe you can message them. Um, it is one of the cheaper options. Uh, I don't know. So you just, when you're purchasing a web lock, you really, really want to be able to use it with a soft release if you're trying to keep it to a minimum. Now, what is a soft release? If you don't know, because I'm obviously very fond of these things, um, I have a video, uh, Soft Release 2.0, which is basically put the soft release on the high line, which some people do, but put it on the static side because that's generally the direction you send your, your webbing back. But... Um, in, in this case, if you only are going to have one uh, for bare bones, you would put it on the side you're tensioning because you're only going to have the one web lock. Not the end of the world. That's how most people do it. Um, but you can see how I use soft releases there. You can see other videos uh, on every other Slackline YouTube channel. You can buy these soft releases for around mid $20. Um, if you're really trying to say, I think it's worth buying because it comes with the sewing loop you got to buy the webbing anyways, whatever. But if you just buy, let's say, 15 more feet or 5 more meters of what you're already going to buy, you could technically tie, you know, in this case, you could tie a simple water knot um, like that and then have the webbing go round and round and round and round. And that would probably, especially if you're only spending 50 cents uh, a foot, it would only cost you $7. Um, but that's, I mean, if you're broke, broke, you could always do that. Otherwise, it's worth the 20, 20 to $30 to buy a soft release. And buy the shortest one you can. You do not need a super long one, even if you're doing your full 100 meters in a park. Um, you can use the tagline I'm going to tell you to buy next um, in order to uh, add, add material to release it. Because if you release something too short and it's got a lot of tension, it's going to go Vroom! on you and... You never want that. Okay, now for the most expensive piece of hardware you're probably going to buy if you buy this. Uh, Line Grip has the G2, G4, and now a G5. Um, G2 is the lightweight one. Um, you're pretty much never going to take a slack line, 
the way we're doing it past seven kilonewtons, which is this working load limit. Um, I think this is a $225, 189 euro, something in that range. This is expensive. It's really nice. Um, it grabs your webbing in case you don't know. Um, but uh, has a nice string on there so it doesn't fall off. It's got these uh, white ball bearings on there. So once you click it into place, it doesn't uh, fall off. Really nice. Anyways, um, you don't need this. This is really nice to have. If you're going to be like, this is something you're going to do, and you got a job, and you got some money, just, just buy one of these. Don't even waste your time doing anything else. Um, because the main idea here is that you would be able to go like this in tension with this. There's the short version. The long version is you can use a prusik instead of this with lines at the low tensions that we highline now. A prusik is nothing more than a four, five, or six millimeter uh, rope accessory cord about this long. And uh, you can buy them for seven or eight dollars on Balanced Community, but all you, it's, it's not even a dollar's worth of rope, you know, maybe two. Um, and what you do is you wrap around, you can Google how to you do a prusik. You got to make sure the knot's really dressed well, so you don't have like strands over each other, all messy, but that it's super nice. And then you go through the eye and this will work better on um, webbings that aren't slippery. Like this would never work on Moonwalk. Moonwalk is just way too slippery of a webbing. But you basically, it, it pulls it. And then what you would do is connect and what you would do is connect, uh, we'll talk about this in a minute, um, this, and you put your webbing through and, and you'd pull. It actually hurts my finger. Um, if it slips, it damages your webbing. That's an issue. There is a uh, place in Russia that makes um, a cheaper version, I think for $80, and that includes shipping. Um, and it's pretty clever design. It is cheaper, it looks cheaper. I don't necessarily need to buy one. So you, and then you can have homemade ones, which are like prusiks over two pieces of wood that are nicely groomed. Um, those are on Slack chat. If you go to Slack chat on Facebook and type in search bar, you can, you can find that stuff. Um, so it's prusik, the Russian version, or the G2. Let's talk about the line slide or the slacktivity hangover in this case. Um, these are like 50 euro. They're not cheap. I'm going to show you how to make one at home um, because we're talking about cheap gear. But um, they do come with a locker for $10 more. Um, if they were $10 cheaper for the locker, I don't recommend buying them. I hate the locker. I have two of them. I don't like how it spins when you're trying to open it and you're all panicky and then I just, you're tied into a leash. You don't freaking need a locker. There you go. And this locker makes it really hard to put on the, the line grip. So keep that in mind. Um, they, they do say to buy, buy like three of these or five of them if you want like this multiplying system. I think that's an expensive way of going about trying to tension uh, higher tensions. I don't want to get into detail about that. I'm trying to keep this into a simple video. Um, but you attach it to your line grip, put your webbing in there, pull towards your web lock. I'm going to show you how to do everything I'm talking about, start to finish in a park, uh, in a separate video because this one's turning out to be pretty long. But anyways, how you make a homemade one, this is what people did, like everyone did back in the day, is you take one of these little SMC pulleys, uh, I think they're one inch pulleys, you drill that out, you put a a uh, high quality bolt, ideally stainless, through there with a locking nut because if it came undone, you'll fall on your leash. Um, then you buy ball bearing skate bearings from like a sporting goods store for like roller skates and you put four of them in there with washers on either side. The washers need to be smaller than the ball bearings uh, so you have just this nice gap. That way the, the ball bearings aren't rubbing along the, the side of this. Now when you're done making this, these side plates are going to be about 
25 millimeters apart or one inch apart. You can't necessarily use something like this. It would, it would pinch the, the plates towards each other. You end up needing a bigger carabiner. See how uh, wide that is there and it would sit in there. Now the thing is when you undo this, it's literally sitting on the line. You have to be careful not to drop it. Um, if you can afford a hangover, you should buy one. But these can be made for, let's say $5, $8 a bolt, under 20 bucks, but then you've got to buy, you don't, you don't have to have a locker, but you've, you've got to buy a, another beaner, which is another seven or eight. Um, it is literally half the price as a hangover. So that's up to you as far as money goes. But um, you only need one or one hangover to do what we're trying to do in this video. So let's talk about connectors. Um, so in loops or knots, you need to be able to connect it to your anchor. These are 12 millimeter bow shackles. Balance Community and Selectivity sell them. I'm sure all the other places do too. They're almost $20 or like 14 euro. Um, you you kind of need a couple of these so that can add up and uh, they're kind of heavy. You, you do have to have one for the soft release. Whatever you have for your web lock will, is one side but you do need to connect this to the anchor and um, you, can't, you can't use any anything else for it. You can't even really use a carabiner. You definitely can't use this. Um, so you will need one of them. Uh, but, but do you need three, right? Because you need, um, you have your main and your backup and then your main and your backup. Uh, the main over here is going to be the web lock, what we just talked about. But the other three points, do you need $20 heavy as hell connector? I don't think you do. Um, this takes about four, five, or six feet of am steel. This is quarter inch or six millimeter am steel. Um, you do need, if you are going to make these, because uh, if you buy these, they're, they're pretty damn expensive, but you can make these at home. I have a very, another long video on how to make these, um, but they're stronger than those. And you can connect even your knots on this. Um, ideally, you'd put padding on this. I haven't had padding on here for years and they're doing just fine because if something's going to abrade your padding, you shouldn't be using this. But anyways, this is a five millimeter quick link. You will need one of these in order to set the knot. This knot has to be pretty damn tight. I do cover this in the video, but what you do is put um, a connector there, connector here, and you put that on a tension system, but you don't own one, so figure out pretty much how to do this, okay? Um, that's the only thing you really do have to buy uh, that's kind of unique to making these, but man, you can make for a dollar nine uh, per foot, um, and it only takes four or five or six feet to make these depending how long you want them. Um, a longer one like this would cost eight feet and so that, that's about ten dollars or less to make this big one which really like you don't need anything this big anymore for what we do um, so uh, you can't beat five six or seven dollars versus twenty dollars for a hard shackle so let's say you have three of these and one hard shackle because you got your four points now you can't put your rope if you're using bolt anchors bolted anchors, you can't put your rope through the hanger. Now, if you have a glue-in bolt or one of these M12 uh, bolt hangers, uh, yeah, you can put your, your rope directly into there. And that's why these, that's why I like these so much. But if you have a normal climbing hanger, which is pretty common on a lot of high lines, um, you can't run your rope through there. The sharp edges just can't do it. Um, I used to use these five millimeters, a bit small. So now I use so these six millimeters, uh, which I like the weight. Um, ideally, you would use an eight millimeter or a 10 millimeter is more common on the slack line sites um, because the diameter of the metal should be the diameter of your rope. But I'm still here. So um, I think they're like 32 kilonewtons, which is stronger than any of these carabiners. Um, you just put those directly on the hanger and then you can run your rope through there. Obviously close it. So this really depends where you're highlining. 
Um, you need to know your area or where you're going to highline before you really can buy the stuff you need for it. Um, I go to Yosemite a lot, and a lot of the bolted high lines are like this. So that's why I own these. Um, if everything you have is glue-ins, you don't have to worry about it. And all you need is the three soft shackles and the one bow shackle. Okay, let's talk about the tagline. We're almost done, okay? Um, this is four millimeter 550 paracord. Uh, you can buy 300 feet or 100 meters of this for um, under $30. Um, same with uh, this quarter inch polypropylene. This is super cheap plastic rope uh, for 20-ish dollars or even less, uh, maybe like $15. Uh, but you want 100 meters of it. Um, you don't need it for slack lining, but you, knew, uh, you do need it for the high lining. Uh, just came home from France. Uh, our friend there did not have a tagline. We're dragging his webbing all over the rocks. Um, it's, it's fine if you're careful a few times, but the goal of what we're trying to do is to not buy gear twice and to not wear out your gear prematurely. Uh, you, if you're dragging your webbing around everywhere, um, it, it's going to wear it out quickly. So uh, I just stick it in a bag. It takes up lightweight. I recommend the paracord because um, it's much smaller. The polypropylene rope uh, is kind of bulky. It just doesn't pack down as good. Um, and they're both technically the same strength. So get yourself about 100 meters of paracord. Um, you flake it into the bag so it comes out nicely. And um, we're going to see how few carabiners we need when we do our, our in the park sample. Because um, you can like rob Peter to pay Paul and use the hangover for stuff. But, um, but anyways, uh, tagline. Don't skimp on this. Okay, you're going to need a harness, obviously, um, unless you love ankle leashing. But uh, anyways, I have an Arcteric harness. Those are not cheap, um, but you can hardly feel them, whereas like a cheaper harness, uh, you can feel them. Uh, cheaper harnesses go for $30, $35. Um, there's a lot of different brands that make harnesses. Uh, they're all fine. A harness is a harness. Uh, There's nothing special about the harnesses we use. So grab yourself, um, a reputable company would be preferred, but uh, grab yourself a harness. You're going to need it. And you do need a personal anchor of some sort if you're going to be working around cliff edges. Um, this, this is something you can buy, but uh, uh, there, there's all sorts of personal anchors you can buy. Uh, this gets girth hitched onto your harness. So... Uh, you do need a carabiner to make this happen, but you can also do a Prussel Prusik, which is you do a, a Prusik after you make a loop and you tie the two ends of the thing together. This gives you uh, flexibility, and if you were to fall, it kind of slips as it tightens, very little, so it, it absorbs some of the shock. So this is kind of almost better than this because like this doesn't absorb anything. And if you like fall, fall, like two meters, six feet over the edge, it's gonna like really hurt. So um, you don't want them ever too loose. I do like my green one here because this one is pretty damn long, but I can extend it out so you can really reach over and work where you need to work and always be clipped in. This gets girth hitched to your harness and uh, you do need a carabiner for this side. Stay clipped in and be safe, please. But that's pretty much it. Uh, we're going in another video. Uh, because I am so out of time on this one, uh, show you how to use all these pieces together. Um, and we're going to do like the bare bones, the prusik and everything. So um, you can see start to finish what it looks like in a park and if you were to do a high line with the bare bones. Because um, I don't want you to have to buy something twice. That is the ultimate crime. Uh, fun fact is you can go to Slack Chat used gear listings and try to find some used gear. That can also save you a ton of money. Um, just be careful what webbing you buy, not just for the fact that it's used, but um, make sure it's enough stretch, but not too much stretch, all the stuff we talked about.